Okay, welcome back to some product development here. I'm going to talk you through this only because there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about that I really couldn't show with just visuals. We're looking at my notebook here, and a few weeks ago I cut my finger on the table saw, and I really got cut on the kickback. I didn't get cut on the blade itself, and so I started thinking about these two-handed push sticks when you would hold one in the left and the right hand. And I started using the pair that I had more often, which I just got from probably from a catalog or Amazon, just two plastic ones with magnets. And the reason they were inconvenient is because there are magnets on them every time I go to pick them up, they're stuck to the table. And I started thinking what these would look like if I was going to see and see them. And I also realized I wanted them to stay in my hand, which is why I want to have finger loops on them. And that is the reason why I started going down this road, because the ones while I was using them, I kept putting them down and picking them back up between every single time I grabbed a piece of wood. And here I'm just sketching out on a piece of one and a half inch thick maple that I just took from the, the wood bin. And I'm just going to whip it up quick on the bandsaw. And again, I call this, this is my own personal version of product development, which, which is fairly common. Just start sketching. A lot of people get too quickly involved with 3D design programs and all that doesn't necessarily answer a lot of questions. And this is a very simple product. This isn't too complicated, but what I'm doing here is a proof of concept. I could have easily went and drilled those holes out, but again, I'm not getting too serious here. I'm just doing a proof of concept. And the reason I picked the thick wood is because we're going to use a left and a right one for each hand. So I cut the profile out in one direction and then I bandsaw off two of them and if I was inclined to keep this design I have the pattern for the third one. But again I'm just sketching out this concept, playing around with it, throwing on the big disc sander, flatten out my my rip cut there on the bandsaw. That's a 32 inch double disc sander and that thing is a lifesaver. I use it quite a bit. Three phase and just feeling it out. The finger loops here feel a little tight. And I also want to put a base on these, which is sort of, there's always this one little breakthrough moment. And this is the breakthrough moment for me. i was showing off a little technique here. If I'm doing something that's symmetrical, I take the cut off and use it to make the opposite half. So I'll draw a center line, cut one half, and then flip it over and use the other half as a pattern. You saw what I did there. And so these are going to be the stands. And they work in two directions. They work in the direction of keeping it straight upright off the table and then also face down at the ready. So the tip and those two lobes will create right there the ability for these to just sit face down on the table and I can grab them at the ready. And when I was using the plastic sticks, which I don't show in this video, like I said, they would kind of be laying on their side. I'd always have to pick them up. So this isn't too complicated of a product. I'm just running through the mill just to figure out how I could improve it. More than anything, these stands right there, you see me just playing around with the idea of the stands. Now, of course, they're going to work, but now it becomes a styling job. And what style is going to take it looking like a, a dinosaur wanting to eat? And you'll notice in my original sketches, had this idea of this scaffolding crane look and I wanted to make that Star Trek logo looking thing a little bit more sharper so now I'm an illustrator I photographed against the cutting mat which has half inch squares on it I bring it up to full scale inside of Illustrator and then on Illustrator I sketch and I fix up and I'm kind of taking it away from that more organic shape making it look a little bit more mechanical making it seem like it's maybe a crane lever or something like that. Just styling. Trying to add some style to it. Um, this isn't the best solution, but I'm going with it. Now, this uh, I'm in Vectrix here, and I'm just running some simulations on the CNC that I'm going to do. That one, I cut out the whole thing. Here, you notice I cut away the interior parts of all those small parts. Those basically turn to sawdust, so they don't run the risk of getting caught up in the cut. So they just basically are gone. And you could see here in the fast forward motion. And if I was going to do production, this is the slower method of the two. 
because it has to eliminate all that material and I'm cutting with an eighth inch bit so it's taken some time this cut took probably 30 minutes but I'm obviously jumping through time and I put a couple of tabs on it so when I cut the parts they don't jump out and that's the problem you run the risk of is all those little parts there's so many of them they're definitely going to jump out and then break your bit when they're not supposed to be in the spot when your bit is rapiding or moving in the air it could get caught up and broken on one of those pieces and so here it is this is the uh, what I'm calling my my second breadboard model kind of getting closer to what might be considered a finish just breaking those tabs and here we are and that bottom will fit right on there obviously I glued them on the first time now I'm trying to do a slot and a tab or a mortise and tenon and here I am and they get a little bit more mechanical looking and I run through some of the paces just figuring out feeling it out starting to feel it out like it's obviously not a very complicated product it's really kind of more down to the styling and just the nuance and now I'm feeling where it's touching my hand and I notice that I tend to grab with my left hand fully always sticking my fingers through the loopholes and with my right hand I always tend to just hold the back of it and I wanted a place to place my thumb and so you see me here I'm gonna draw on some notes that I want to make adjustments to I need a thumb loop I need to beef up the back of that handle there and uh, I'm kinda of talking to myself while I'm doing this get rid of that because I was rubbing into the palm of my hand definitely get rid of that and I wanna make these as a pair I'm thinking about designing these full, more fully and selling them on my website but I want to sell them as a pair that definitely is too big it takes up too much space on the desktop there on the top of the saw so I want to shrink that round that back and you can see here this is again just product development the best way to solve a lot of these problems and you know style problems and physical problems is just to use them just to use them and now I'm using a really interesting tool you draw images over images or vectors over vectors and you can just clip away the ones you don't want this is in Vectrix the software used to design the cutting path I use a ShopBot but this particular software is used for a lot of different machines and now I also have a logo placement and here you see I'm getting rid of that thing that you saw the sharpie marker it's really important to do breadboards it solves a lot of problems breadboards do it a few times um, by the end of this video you'll see I have a much more finished product but it's still not finished I'm gonna keep using it figuring it out seeing how I can improve it now you see I was able to just shrink that shape and now I have the next version with a couple more subtle fixes and I want to sell them in pairs or make them in pairs and I'm just adjusting them so they fit on the material now this is more of a final material so I went from handmade to CNC on just scrap half inch plywood and now this is King Color Core this is a, a HTP or like like bottle cap material and uh, you see this uh, uh, this material around a lot. I very first saw it in a New York City park. It's designed for CNCing. You can cut through that first layer and it reveals the white. And it's for making signs that we're going to be that are going to live outside. So the New York City Parks Department makes all the green and white signs out of this material. I was able to source it and I used it a few years ago for a, a liquor sign. And it cuts beautifully. It, it's almost like cutting wax. It's it's super slick it almost it's like self lubricating it doesn't wear the blade it makes this fine powder though and I, I left the vacuum off just so you could see what I'm doing and uh, as hard as I try I have a hard time making scene C videos exciting <laughs> visually but in this case I did a fully on the vector cut because those pieces will stay in if I did it in wood those little tiny pieces tend to pop out on the tabs but with this material you have to break the tabs or cut them so that's why I, I didn't evaporate all the material like the original cut so here I'm just cutting the small tabs that are holding all those pieces in I did two tabs per piece so I got to cut two times on each one and then off camera with an exacto knife I do a clean cut get rid of all those tabs and I'm hammering that back on the cut has curves in it in the inside hole and the the the, the mortise and the tenon has squares so it, it's a force fit and that's unbreakable plastic I could bend that it probably won't break it'll probably just fatigue and stay bent 
So that's why this is good material for doing push sticks out of. I'm just looking at that cut. I'm not going to really fully know some of the nuances that I want to change about this until I use these several times. And like I said, one of the, the main reasons I decided to try and design these with the with the, the brass knuckle grip was so that I could hold them while I'm picking up material. And you can see me doing that here. I have them in my hands. I'm still able to process material, pick stuff up without ever having to put them down, which was the reason that kind of led me to do this product development. And then while I was into it, that's when I realized about the feet and having it at the ready, face down on the table, so I could always just grab it and pick it up. And I wanted to make them the same, but I do notice that I always grab it differently with my right hand than I do with my, my left hand. And just showing a little uh, stage by stage here. Thanks for watching. I hope this was informative. I owe everybody a tips video on CNCing, which this reminded me of. And this isn't over. I'm going to keep developing these, and eventually I'll sell them on my website. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.